I don't feel like I have to wait very long these days for a natural disaster to come around and completely like knock out a town, destroying you know, all the electricity and uh, the water supply. And I don't think it's gonna get much better. Now we're rolling into winter when we have to deal with snowstorms. So I thought it would be appropriate to make a video about how we can completely disaster-proof our indoor hydroponic gardens. So I broke it down into two videos and they're each gonna cover different scenarios. So scenario A in this video is gonna be if uh, we just wanna disaster-proof like our tower garden, our aeroponic garden from a blackout or power outage for up to like three days. It's much more simple than you might think. It's actually much cheaper than you might think. Um, and we're gonna go over that in this video. Scenario two, full-on post-apocalyptic Armageddon situation. And we have to grow our own like sustainable indoor hydroponic garden with solar and everything so that gets a little crazy I really enjoyed writing the script and the guide for those videos though uh, there's a lot of information I don't expect you to retain it all so I did make you a guide and uh, you can go download that right now actually because I actually included the second part about all the solar and, and doing the post-apocalyptic garden in the guide that you can get right now even though that video isn't out it's kind of a little bit of an exclusive I guess so let's get right into what you can do today for fairly inexpensively to completely disaster proof your tower garden or your aeroponic garden. And I say aeroponic gardens because if you have a crack key garden or a hydroponic garden where the roots are in water, it doesn't matter if the power goes out. You know, if you have a deep water culture with bubbles hitting your roots, if that power goes out, then you just have a crack key garden, it'll be fine. But if we have an aeroponic garden where our roots are suspended in air, and that power goes out, then they're gonna dry out really quickly. So we need to make sure that we continuously bring water to those roots at the very least every couple hours to make sure that we're keeping our plants alive in this disaster scenario. And a great way that you can keep your plants alive, you can keep your pump running for up to three days, maybe even longer if you adjust the pump timing, is with one of these. So this is called a battery backup is an absolutely genius way to add a little security, a little insurance to your hydroponic garden. This is basically a surge protector with a battery built in and it charges when it's plugged into the wall. It recognizes when that charge is gone and it cuts then to the battery power. It's made for like uh, office buildings where there's a lot of computers running and sensitive information. The last thing you want is for all that to be lost because of a power outage. So they're made to keep computers on for just a couple minutes. They're not insanely powerful. This is why it's kind of important to ask yourself two big questions before you buy your battery backup. How much power does the pump use and how often am I gonna need to use it? Now let's say we have four tower gardens. So let's do all the math for this real quick. Pull up the white screen. Okay, so I already figured out that, let's say uh, we're gonna use the tower garden pump as, our, as just our standard here, because it's a very, very popular pump. All the tower gardens come with the same pump. And this one uses two watts per hour to run for five minutes. All right, I laid out in the guide how I figured out all this information. I don't wanna go over that in this video because this, because that'll just get way too complicated. I'd lose you guys. Check out the guide if you wanna know how I'm doing all this math. It lays it all out for you. So, so that's gonna be a total of eight watts per hour that I'm gonna to need to keep my plants alive. Now if you multiply that by 24 hours and that's gonna be 192 watts per day for my entire garden, all right? So with this particular setup, four tower gardens, I wanna make sure that they can last for three days off grid. I did some research and I found this battery backup on Amazon. It is a 500 watt battery backup and is reasonably priced at $100. And that means that I could purchase two of these and I would split the load with both of my gardens and two of these battery backups would be enough to run four tower gardens completely off the grid for three or four days. Now, one thing to strongly consider when running off of DC or battery power is when the battery voltage drops below 11 volts, the performance, the performance is like marginally worse, like way, way worse. So we have to keep that in mind when we're running off of battery power here. Once it gets down low, it might not even have enough power to lift the pump. So we're talking about usable energy at this point. So this would be just a $200 investment to make sure that I could keep growing all of my plants. And that's to, and we're talking about four 20 plant tower gardens. So that's 80 plants we're talking about keeping alive. That's not just a small thing. You know, investing $200 to make sure that we keep 
80 plants alive is, is not a lot of investment for a lot of return, especially if these plants are something that we rely on uh, in a situation where we might be stuck in our house, we might not be able to leave. So I strongly recommend picking up a couple of these battery backups. Check the guide to figure out the math for yourself, but hey, if you have two tower gardens, then you can just follow the math that I already did and pick up one of those battery backups and you'd be just fine for three or four days. Now, something really cool that I discovered is if you want to charge your battery backup. Let's say you have a power outage for even longer. You don't know when it's going to come back on, but this is the setup that you have right now. You can pick up something called a power inverter. Now what this does is it transfers DC electricity into AC electricity and you can plug it into your car. Now, I don't recommend doing this unless you're in like a disaster situation because it's going to be hard on your car's battery and your car's alternator. Uh, but if you plug like a, a thousand watt, 1200 watt power inverter into your car and then plug that into your battery backup, then you can actually charge your battery backup off of your car and get yourself three or four more days uh, for your garden. Now, the next video is gonna go into what we do in a longer term situation, how we would build out something much more sustainable. And like I said, you can get a sneak peek of that if you just go check out the second part of the guide that I made. Uh, basically, we're gonna build a whole solar setup with the capacitors, do all the math to figure out how much we would need for grow lights and the tower gardens. Uh, it's really intricate, really fun stuff. I have a really good time designing solar. I've done this a lot in the past. I actually had a whole separate YouTube channel where I took buses and uh, with my wife and we stripped them out and I made them all completely off-grid sustainable. I've done that with seven buses now. So I built seven fully sustainable solar setups before and I really enjoy it and, uh, and I really look forward to making tomorrow's video and I also really look forward to hearing about if this helped you or not and reading your comments down below. So I'll see you guys in the next video and let's keep growing together. Thank you.